తరుగు తక్కువ నిజ శ్రావణంలో ఇంకా తక్కువ మీ ఇంట బంగారం వజ్రాలు వెండి వెళ్లి విరియాలి ద గోల్డెన్ వర్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ భారత రత్న శ్రీ బాబాసాహెబ్ అంబేద్కర్ గారు ఐ మెషర్ ద ప్రోగ్రెస్ ఆఫ్ ఎ కమ్యూనిటీ బై ద డిగ్రీ ఆఫ్ ప్రోగ్రెస్ విచ్ ఉమెన్ హ్యావ్ అచీవ్డ్ అన్కోట్ సో ఆనరబుల్ చైర్పర్సన్ సార్ టుడే వీ గ్యాదర్ హియర్ to engage in a thoughtful and critical discussion on a pivotal piece of legislation that has the potential to reshape the landscape of Indian politics and enhance the representation of women in our democratic institutions. So we convene to deliberate upon the Constitution Bill 2023, a proposal that seeks to reserve one-third of all seats for women in lok sabha and in state legislative assemblies honorable chairperson sir this bill carries the promise of empowering women fostering inclusivity and advancing the cause of gender equality in our political sphere it's a testament to our commitment to strengthening democracy by ensuring that every voice regardless of gender is not only heard but also represented in the highest echelons of governance. So, Bharat Mata, we fondly call India as Bharat Mata, the national personification of India. We fondly call our country as Bharat Mata since we are emotionally connected with the country. As Bharat Mata, we give the same to women in the country. I am very happy to say this in this August House. As we embark on this journey of exploration and analysis, let us consider the highlights of this bill and the key issues and debates that surround it. And some of the positive points I want to bring to this August House through your chairperson, sir. One is empowerment of women. The foremost positive aspect of this bill is its potential to empower women in India. Despite the constitutional promise of gender equality, women have been underrepresented in our legislative bodies. So this reservation policy acknowledges the need for affirmative action to uplift the status of women and provide them with equal opportunities in politics. And the second point is resource allocation. So studies have shown that the political reservation for women leads to increase in the allocation of resources to issues closely linked to women's concerns. So this means that women in power are more likely to address issues like health care, education and sanitation which are often neglected. So and third point is increased participation. So this bill will encourage more women to actively participate in politics. It sends a powerful message to women across the nation that their voices and perspectives are valuable and deserve representation at the highest levels of government. And the fourth point, equitable representation. So rotating reserved seats ensures equitable representation of women from different regions, enhancing the inclusivity of diverse per perspectives. This bill will help diversify the backgrounds, the experiences and perspectives of our elected officials, resulting in more inclusive and balanced decision making. So through you, Chairperson, sir, from YSR Congress Party under the dynamic leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, Shri Vice Jagan Mohan Reddy Garu, some of the suggestions to this August House. So one is to review the clause. The provision in clause 5 of the article to insert 330A1 that the reservation shall cease to exist 15 years of the commencement of the Act should be reviewed periodically. So the review process should involve stakeholders and experts to assess the impact and need for continuation. And the second one is include OBCs. So the original recommendation of the Joint Committee on the 1996 bill suggested extending reservations to women from other backward classes, OBCs, once the constitution allowed for OBC reservation. So this recommendation could be reconsidered for greater inclusivity. And the third one, preventing proxy candidates. To prevent proxy candidates and ensure genuine representation of women in Lok Sabha and legislative assemblies, it is crucial to establish stringent eligibility criteria 
So candidates should be required to actively engage in campaign activities, participate in debates, and contribute sustain to, substantially to continuously constituency-related discussions. And the fourth one is extend to upper houses. So while the bill focuses on the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies, consideration should be given to extending reservations to the Rajya Sabha and legislative councils for a comprehensive approach to gender equality in politics. Through your chairperson, sir,